In a video last week, I talked about PE ratios, which are how we can tell if stocks are cheap or expensive. The markets right now are going crazy, so I thought we'd make another video and talk about the market's PE ratios. Actually, today, we just entered a bear market. What that means is that means the stock market is down at least 20% from a recent high. If you haven't seen the previous video, you can find that up here. As far as PE ratios go, we said in the previous video that P.E. ratio is how much you have to pay for the right to a dollar of a firm's profit. And we said the long run average P.E. for U.S. firms was between 16 and $20. In the video, I talked about P.E. ratio, which is share price over the last 12 months earnings. I also mentioned the forward P.E. ratio, which is share price over the next 12 months expected earnings. Today, we're going to go over a report by a company called FactSet, and it focuses on forward P.E. ratio. So today, when you see P.E. ratio, think share price over next 12 months earnings. In the first figure, you'll see a dashed horizontal line just below 17. That's the 10-year average P.E. ratio for the S&P 500. Now, the S&P 500 is 500 large U.S. firms. Think all the firms you know, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Tesla, Facebook, Amazon, those kinds of firms are in the S&P 500. These are the large U.S. firms. So that dash line, that's the average P.E. ratio over the 10-year period in this chart. The solid line, that's the P.E. ratio of the S&P 500. You can see it moves around a lot over this 10-year period. Right after COVID, when things got bad, it fell as low as 13. Then we recovered and got as high as 23. And then in the last few months, it's fallen sharply and just recently crossed below the 10-year average, which is 16.9. The current P.E. is 16.6. So it's just below the 10-year average. Now, if we think about the two components of the PE, there's price and there's earnings, if we want to disentangle those two things and find out which one's responsible for the PE ratio falling, we can do that because FactSet gave us the data. In the second chart, you'll see this dark blue line. That's earnings. So after COVID, it fell off a little bit, and then it's been rising ever since. So the denominator is fine, but the numerator of the P ratio, price, that's the light blue line. You can see after COVID, that fell a little bit, then it rose, but recently it's been falling, and it's been falling a lot. So that's the reason the PE ratio is falling. The denominator is rising slowly, but the numerator is falling quickly. So if the numerator is falling quickly, and the denominator is rising slowly, then the P ratio is going to fall quickly and that's what's been happening. The report also gave us some industry level data. This first chart here is industry level PE ratios. So we have two ratios beside each other for each industry. The dark blue bar is the current industry PE ratio. The green bar is the 10 year average industry PE ratio. So if the blue is above the green, this means that industry is expensive. If the blue is less than the green, that means the industry is cheap. The industries are organized from highest PE ratio on the left to lowest PE ratio on the right. The industry with the highest current PE ratio is consumer discretionary. These are firms like Amazon and Tesla, what people spend their discretionary money on. The industry all the way to the right is energy. Just to remind you what we learned in the last video, the interpretation of the energy industry PE ratio is you'd have to pay $9.9 .9 for the right to $1 of an energy firm's profits right now. That's what the 9.9 .9 energy industry PE ratio means. The fact set report also had some earnings data in it, which we'll talk about for a second. But before we do, let's just make sure we're on the same page as far as earnings go. So what earnings are is after every quarter, firms come to Wall Street and tell Wall Street how they did in the previous quarter. It could be like Apple would come and say, we earned $1.50 per share in the first quarter of 2022. At the same time, there are analysts on Wall Street who make estimates about what they expect Apple's profits to be. So these numbers will always be compared. Wall Street expected a dollar per share from Apple and Apple earned $1.50. This would be really good news for Apple and the share price would likely move up. It could also be the case that Wall Street expects Apple to earn a dollar per share and Apple only earns 75 cents per share. This would be bad news. This would likely cause Apple share price to move down. Also, for the back of your mind, earnings are an important time for share prices. About 50% of share price movement happens around earnings announcement. This makes sense, right? When you're buying a stock, you're buying the right to some of the firm's profits. We learn better what the firm's profits are at earnings announcements. Also for the back of your mind, over the last 10 years, about 75% of firms have profits higher than the Wall Street estimate. 
Anyways, about the earnings data in this fact set report, this first chart here, it shows at the industry level, the green portion is the percentage of firms within that industry that have earnings higher than Wall Street estimates. The yellow portion is the portion of firms within that industry that have earnings exactly the same as Wall Street estimates. And the red is the portion of firms within an industry that have earnings less than Wall Street estimates. So the sum of the green, yellow, and red needs to equal 100 because there'll be 100% of firms within that particular industry. This figure is organized with firms on the left have the highest percentage of firms within an industry that beat Wall Street estimates and on the right would be the lowest percentage of firms that beat Wall Street estimates. If we look to all the way to the right, we see consumer discretionary. It makes sense that this industry would have the lowest percentage of firms beating Wall Street estimates. Right now, inflation is going crazy. So people have things that they need to buy, like they need to pay the rent, they need to buy their food, they need to buy their medicine, they need to put gas in their car. That stuff they can't change. The things they can change are the discretionary things. Those would probably be the first things to get cut. They don't need to buy the extra discretionary things. So it makes sense that discretionary firms are having lower profits, right? The second chart, it gives the average earnings surprise by industry, ranked from highest surprise to lowest surprise. What this means is if Wall Street estimates Apple should earn a dollar per share and Apple earns a dollar fifty per share, that would be a 50% earnings surprise. So what the chart does is it calculates the average earnings surprise within industries and then ranks them from highest to lowest. We see utility firms all the way at the top where the average utility firm earning surprise is approximately 15%. And all the way at the bottom again, we see consumer discretionary have negative earning surprise. They're the only industry with negative earning surprises. The utility results sort of make sense, right? Utility companies have a monopoly. So if their costs go up, they can just pass the cost onto their customers and there's nothing their customers can do. They just have to pay the cost. I'm not gonna not pay my utility bill because they raised the price by 5% last month. I need, I need my electricity, I need my gas, I need to take a shower, I need to have air conditioner, I need to pay my utility bill. One other interesting thing from the report was this last chart I'm gonna show you. So FactSet, the company that put out this report, they have the transcripts from the earnings calls from the S&P 500 firms over time. One thing they did is they look for the word inflation in every company's earnings call. Then they plot the time series of the percentage of firms in the S&P 500 that mentioned the word inflation in their earnings call, then they plotted that over time. We can see from 2017 to 2019, the average was about 30% of firms in the S&P mentioned the word inflation in their earnings calls. Then when COVID hit, it dropped to 12 or 13%, but it's been rising and rising and rising. And in Q1 2022 earnings calls, 85% of S&P 500 firms mentioned the word inflation. And you and I can feel inflation happening right now. I know gas prices in California are six bucks a gallon. So inflation is real. It's not only real to us, the consumer, but it's real to the firms who are selling us goods. They're dealing with it as well. I think that's one of the main reasons Walmart and Target cited for their bad earnings reports this week. Hopefully this video has been helpful. You'll know a little bit more about what's going on with the market. So right now, the P ratio of the S&P 500 is almost equal to its 10 year average. Whereas six months ago, it was significantly higher than its 10 year average. So six months ago, the stock market was expensive. Right now, it's no longer expensive. Hopefully you learned something. If so, please click below and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.